Bombarded, destroyed and abandoned, almost 34,000 people are forced to leave their homes as a result of war and conflict every single day. Hundreds of thousands of children have successfully travelled to new countries and communities, including the UK. Now a small group based in Chichester are looking to go one step closer to achieving a dream that almost every child has here, becoming a professional footballer. This is Nations United, the first ever all-refugee team in Britain. These young men may have smiles on their faces now, but they have gone through incredibly difficult journeys to even reach a safe home, let alone kick a football. The war-torn countries that they fled from saw them leave behind everything to travel tens of thousands of miles without even the guarantee of survival. Some were unfortunate enough to lose their loved ones on their quest to safety, whilst others stayed for months in camps located around the French borders. I came from Eritrea by Sahara. Mm, it was long and very horrible trip. I came by Libya, then Italy, France, and now I'm in England. After reaching the welcoming arms of the UK to seek refuge, many were taken into housing facilities and given hope of a better future. Nations United is part of uh, the Sanctuary in Chichester organisation, which is a two-year-old organisation set up to support refugees from wherever that come into this part of West Sussex. And the Sanctuary of Chichester, a volunteer support group committed to welcoming refugees and asylum seekers into the community have been there for the group since their arrival in late 2017. The group organised weekly sessions to discuss ongoing plans to help these individuals reach the better lives that they have always dreamt of. And it was at one of these drop-in sessions that the guys tried letting people know just how much football meant to them in their home countries and their natural hopes to continue playing. Yeah, when I was a child, I, was, I used to play football when I came from the school. I preferred uh, playing football more than uh, instead of food. Just I was playing always, that's why still now I'm playing. Football is my life. After realising the collective interest in football, the Sanctuary created a fundraiser which later inspired the birth of the team. So there were two or three lads that we had that came regularly to our drop-in sessions and they were chatting about football. Uh, and um, we joined in and one of them said, well, could you organise a team for us? And we scratched our heads and said, maybe. Uh, and really, they haven't let us rest. According to figures from the United Nations, there are currently 65.3 million displaced people in the world. 21.3 million of those are refugees and asylum seekers. And they've come across places like uh, Af uh, Eritrea, they've crossed Ethiopia, they've crossed southern Sudan, which is a war zone itself. They've got up to places like Libya, crossed the Mediterranean, and then they've got, to, they've got across Europe to Calais. And one of the lads was telling me this afternoon that he spent nine months in the camp in Calais trying to find a place, you know, in a lorry to get across here. Um, so they're kids with tremendous courage, huge energy and um, a lot of determination. When we're talking about guys who've been through really, really, really unbelievably hard time and had their families murdered and have travelled thousands of miles, and pull that together and create a team. You know, that was quite special, really. The side are currently made up of a total of eight different nationalities. Eritrea, Sudan, Egypt, Iran, Syria, Somalia, and Albania. They also boast a total of five different languages between them. In the team, I think we have like eight countries in the team. So it's quite difficult to like getting used to each other because different culture and, you know, well, yeah, now it's very good, yeah. I mean, um, there's challenges to any football team communicating uh, with itself. Uh, I mean, that's, that, that's the whole point, isn't it? You know, that they want to create new lives. They want to be integrated into the community. They want to have a sense of purpose. They want a sense of belonging. And these are all reasons why we're doing this. It's not just a kick a ball about. It's actually, you know, that all the reasons behind that are about really embracing things like equality 
and diversity and inclusion in reality, actually making it happen. Under the management of John Burrow and Steve Guff, with James Stem lending a hand as first team coach, the side only needed a few weeks of training before they were ready for their first ever friendly. A lack of resources meant that the club found themselves without a kit for the fixture. Fortunately though, their opponents, the Clancy Cavaliers, followed the suit of generosity by lending them some for the time being. After only a small amount of time knowing one another, it all came down to this moment where history would be made. Many members of the community and volunteers from the sanctuary turned out to offer their support. And they weren't let down as the side strolled to a dominant 7-2 victory. Whilst the coaches walked away with their heads held high, proud of all of the work that they had put in to prepare the team, the players carried on playing. I was amazed at how skillful some of the guys are. And it was the very first time they sat on a pitch together. So. Um, unbelievable that they kind of you know did that um, yeah and I was really excited and and yeah it's nice to have some sort of tangible uh, achievement that you know for our hard work really so it was good. Yeah, it was a good game to watch a uh, lot of talent so hopefully they can all play as a team more often get a proper league going and uh, push on like that. Many of these guys have dreams of reaching the heights of professional football now but for Mohammed here Seeing tomorrow has always been the objective. I don't know, some people they say I want to be like Ronaldo, I want to be like Messi. I'm not sure because tomorrow what happened, I don't know. So just God know. With new players signing up each week, the club is relying on the generosity of its volunteers and the community to help aid the growth of the squad. So, just how much help have these volunteers been so far for these guys? Yeah, it's it's great. Yeah, yeah, it's great because all the people and the coach and John and Steve, uh, both of them are support us really good. And the last match, the, we have a lot of fans and everyone just follow us, and that's real great. Really, really feel good. Yeah. yeah, it's very nice. It's I'm feeling good and happy with these guys. Providing these young men with a facility and a football has given them a new lease of life. But hiring a pitch at Chichester College and paying for a referee costs the group nearly £40 each time, initially causing some concern about the long-term future of the club. There's a huge amount of infrastructure required, there's finance support required, you know, there's a lot of issues, a lot of challenges. And don't forget, Sanctuary in Chichester is entirely run by volunteers. There's not anybody that's paid in Sanctuary in Chichester. So everybody's you know, living their own lives and doing this on top of that. It's staggering to think that Premier League managers are paid millions, whilst all of the people involved in this team are making nothing whatsoever. Yeah, they're just are members of the public who feel the same way that we all feel towards other humans, especially ones that have suffered stuff that we might not have coped with ever ourselves had it happened to us. And, you know, here we are. Great game. 7-2 or whatever. <laughs> Fabrice Mwamba became the first refugee to represent England at almost every other level than the first team. So can these guys now go one step better and walk out at Wembley one day? With hard work and dedication built into their systems, you certainly wouldn't write them off. <laughs>